This is the lab for the projectile motion and ballistic pendulum and this motivation here that you see here there's ballistics, forensic science, there's sports, lots of sports here and so whenever you see something that is being thrown or shot well they will follow a certain trajectory and it's important to know what the muzzle velocity is with which it was thrown, the initial velocity. All right let's go ahead here so I'm gonna scroll through here this one here is the objective, determine the projectile's initial velocity by using two different methods, ballistic pendulum and projectile motion, and then compare those results. Apply the conservation of laws for momentum and mechanical energy and apply the equations for project projectile motion. This is why this particular lab is part of this unit here on momentum and mechanical energy. So here's a drawing for the ballistic pendulum and you have a projectile being shot into a cup that is suspended by a string or a rod and then the cup once it catches it goes up here to a certain height and then we could measure the angle and then from here during the impact the momentum is being conserved kinetic energy by the way is not being conserved kinetic and potential energy because the impact actually takes up some energy interestingly so there is a little bit of heating up between the two. Then when it swings up, kinetic energy is transformed to potential energy and so that's why you have here is the kinetic energy and potential energy while here is the momentum equation and these two are then combined to, let's see, this equation here which we'll be using respectively, it'll be posted in Excel. Okay, the projectile motion, you have to imagine and I'll show you this here um, later on is that you shoot it horizontally and you get this equation and you shoot it at an angle of 45 degrees and you get this equation they're relatively simple these two equations I will show you in the addendum that what happens if you change those parameters it gets quite complicated but I chose two equations that are relatively simple all right this here would be the normal equipment that we would be using either a small nerf gun here with a cup and then that would be suspended on some string and the reason why the duct tape is on, on here is so that the dart actually doesn't fall out. This is what I usually send in at home packages. This however is what I'm using in the lab intensives. There is another reason here because these crossbows besides that they're more powerful um, they have these rubber bands and it's actually easy to measure with how much force they're being um, shot so and then the scale here would be for measuring the mass and then there's a measuring tape here well measure the distance measure the length of the pendulum and so on all right so here experimental procedure and analysis and you would see well this is how it is shoot into the pendulum cup and then you will see that it goes up again that would be the normal exper experiment and then these are all my example data these here oh yeah so now it becomes important here so the other stuff was important too, right? So skip tables 1 through 8. Instead, paste your data from Excel right here. And I will show you the Excel sheet quite soon. Okay, here's the ballistic pendulum method. So we don't have to use that because we're going to skip it. I'm just going quickly over it. If we're in Alaska, we would use 982 centimeters per second squared. But we're going to use applets and they only supply 9.8. So we will be using that in meters per second squared. Right, there are two different met methods. I don't need to explain them right now. We're just going to use one of them. And again, Excel actually will do that work for us. This year would then be the projectile motion. So if we really did it, we sh would shoot it from in two different ways. We would shoot it from a given height of, for example, one meter. And we would shoot it from the floor at an angle of 45 degrees. Again, the reason is that these equations are relatively simple if we do that and then we come up with three different results here and here and for the ballistic pendulum here and they should all match which since it's an experiment well they, it's going to have measurement errors except of course we're going to use applets and you will see those are perfect data unfortunately well it's nice to have perfect data but it would be nice to see what really happens um, again we're not going to do any of these tables so this here would be the advertised range what the uh, manufacturer says it would be and I noticed actually that for these nerf guns and crossbows actually they do advertise 
quite a reasonable range so they don't they don't actually over exaggerate those uh, this one here would be actually measuring the rubber bands that's why I like the crossbows because you have these rubber bands with a spring scale or force probe and we could actually figure out we actually figure out what the force is it's quite a bit it's a neighborhood of like 20 some newtons or so which is about five pounds and so and then we plug it in here we come up with that this one here I actually never do and neither do I do the video analysis of that except today you get the video analysis of the applets all right so then yeah no conclusion and then here's this denim so I have a little denim here because once in a while a student confuses it to projectile motions and shoots at 45 degree angle from one meter up um, I say well hey don't do that but the thing is sometimes they do it and then they come up with something like that and then look at the algebra it gets quite complicated this one here as well as in the footnote this one over here but as I said we're going to keep it simple and so for example we only have this equation and the other one you saw earlier all right let's go ahead and we'll look at the applets what I want you to do first relatively quickly the Excel sheet in just a moment so again we're gonna do a ballistic pendulum method the left hand side in fact of this one here and we're gonna do both projectile motion methods this one here horizontal and this one here at a 45 degree angle and then compare all right let's get going here with the Excel sheet Alright, so here in the Excel sheet, I call these here also applet table one, two, and three. That's a little bit off the screen. And the applets will already give us a bullet speed, so we already have an idea of what it should be. And then we're gonna use a ballistic pendulum for that, compute the initial velocity, then we're gonna use the projectile motion horizontally table applet table 2 and then a projectile motion at a 45 degree angle applet table 3 and right now you can see all these zeros here and division by zero that's because I already put the equations in and you will see later it automatically calculates it and the stuff in red will be the important stuff so let's do a couple of examples with the applets So I googled ballistic pendulum applet and I came up with actually the first choices were exactly what I wanted. I, as you can see, I actually have, actually you can't see, no you can't I think, you, I actually have three open, here's one, I'm going to pull this up, here's another one, and here's a third one. I only need two, this is going to, this is going to be the one for the projectile motion, this is called from O Physics or GeoGebra and they have all kinds of bunch of, of stuff here they also have this ballistic pendulum I'm just gonna show you this one so fire and there you go right it goes in here and by the way this is actually where it loses the energy carving out something into the block respectively when it hits the cup there's some heat involved unfortunately I cannot use this particular applet because of the I'm gonna reset this one here because of the initial velocity of the bullet down here we can see that this one here goes from 100 to 225 meters per second but the other applet only goes up to 100 so I could only have one overlap I don't want that so that's where I'm gonna have another a different kind of ballistic pendulum applet because this gives me here a range between 50 and 100 while the projectile motion here I'm gonna change this here for just a moment gives me a range between 0 and 100 so they have a nice overlap between 50 and 100 so that's why I'm going to use this one rather than the other ballistic pendulum all right so let me take some example measurements so you might have seen in my excel sheet I wrote down a pendulum length of 1.47 meters notice that the bullet is raised automatically as I shortened the pendulum length here then I chose a bullet mass of 23.6 grams there we go an initial bullet speed of 51.5 and these are kind of arbitrary numbers anything will work and I just figure hey just choose some arbitrary numbers so here then 935 
and there we go okay and then I hit the play button and we can see that the bullet shoots into the pendulum I'm gonna reset it by the way <laughs> the bullet actually doesn't drop gravity should make it drop right but they took it out of this applet here so again play here okay and now comes the difficult thing it doesn't actually stop and without friction it just there's no friction involved here no air resistance this one just keeps on going so I actually have to pause it and then figure out what the highest angle is and you would have to do that too so let's see if I can do that it just keeps swinging and so let's go a little forward oh actually it's going backwards going down what was it doing now why uh-oh Oh shoot, do I have to reset it? Okay, I have to reset it. Let's try again. There we go, and pause. And play and pause, there we go. Okay, let's see what the largest value is. So I'm trying to find the largest value here. There it is, 19.23 degrees. So I'm gonna take that 19.23 degrees, everything else being the same here. Okay. and notice I come up with 51.50 meters per second which matches the bullet speed no surprise here because these applets are perfect that's why I actually prefer the nerf guns because you get some measurement error there right by the way the equation that's behind here you can see that on the top here right here that is actually the same equation that you find for the ballistic pendulum in the word document let's see if I can still pull that up so this e long equation here is this one right here so and then of course again because the applet is actually making that um, gives us perfect measurements perfect data that's why I come up with a perfect result here all right so let's see I want to do now the projectile motion this one here actually loads as such there we go there's a number of things here actually just off the screen rather than components I'd like to have angle and initial velocity so this one just changed here I can change it back so this one gives me the y and the x velocity but I prefer instead the angle and then the initial velocity there all right, so I'm going to choose the same one here, 51.5. Why is it showing components? Turn it off. Oh, I'm in my way here. 51.5. Trying there, trying, getting close. Okay, actually, oh, there it is. Okay, actually, I could actually plug that in. And then, let's see, this is the, actually the horizontal shot. So I want to push this down to zero. And now if I shoot it from the horizontal here from the ground level well this happens it falls into the ground well I cannot use that so I actually have to get it up to a certain height in the lab you have seen that it would be one meter that's a little bit too low for me so here I think I'm gonna use 20 meters there we go and there it is right 20 meters up here and now I'm gonna shoot it let's see there we go and then it goes actually off the screen just a little bit off the screen so I'm gonna reset and I'm gonna zoom out by the way this one allows me to choose a different value for gravity but the other one doesn't so I'm gonna keep it at 9.8 so again shoot this one here and pause and let's see if this is a hundred this is 120 then the 110 is here so maybe this is a hundred four that's what I'm gonna choose so I'm gonna use 104 that at least gives me a little bit of an idea of I have some measurement error attached to to this one so 104 meters right here and I come up with 51.48 still very perfect right the equation behind it is this one right here oops there it is there's the equation right here and that one matches notice the square root here matches the one that I have in the lab manual this one right here with the square root 9.8 over 2 times the height and that's exactly what I have here 9.8 times divided by 2 times the height which is the cell over here all right so the other 
the third method here. So this one over here. So this time around, get the height down to zero, shoot at an angle of 45 degrees. By the way, I noticed that if I try to type this one in here and erase accidentally the degree sign, then it, it gets a little funky there. It doesn't want to do it. I would have to reset the whole thing. So 45.9, I'm going to try to click in here right behind the nine and try to take that off right there. I think I got it. All right. Whoa, this looks weird. Oh, that's because I didn't reset it. All right. It looks like, let's see, when I fire, it goes off the screen. Yes, it does. So I would have to actually zoom out. By the way, we're the, the Nerf guns, they fire at much lower speeds. So this one, of course, here, these are pretending to be real bullets or relatively fast bullets, 100 meters per second. Um, which is 300 feet per second. So it's still a slow bullet, but much faster than a Nerf. And that's why this goes over the distance of almost three football fields, right? So anyway, I have to um, reset and fire. And then I'm going to see where it impacts. And, all right. So if this is 260 here and this is 280, 270. So let's call it 271. So going back to my Excel sheet. 271 and 51.53 again I have a little bit of a measurement error because I have to guess a little bit there but of course again it's applets and I come up with really great results all right let's do another example and I think you already got the idea but I'm gonna do another example anyway oh by the way this particular equation on the word document is this one right here square root of distance times gravity so when I go back here right there scroll down and here's square root of distance times gravity so I use these equations which again if we did the real experiment here we use these exact equations but we use real equipment, so we're not going to have perfect data. In fact, this particular experiment has actually quite some error attached to it. All right, I said a second example. So let's see. Okay, yeah, that's the applet that I didn't want to use. Um, let's choose an upper one here. So 93 meters per second. Let's choose a bullet mass of, oh, this much here, I guess. And then target mass. Oh, actually, hey, let's make it heavier. There we go. And and, and you're, you're totally free to choose your own values. And going across in the Excel sheet, you should come up with virtually perfect results. Just pay attention to that, that um, you plug in your data incorrectly. And in, I mean, that you plug in your data correctly into Excel. Okay, let's shoot. There we go. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, plus. And let's see how high this goes. So again, as I'm clicking on step here, I'm trying to find the highest value. There it was, right? 50.10 degrees. So I'm going to go over to the Excel sheet for the ballistic pendulum. And let's see what I had. Um, I'm supposed to have, whoops, I'm supposed to have 93.0 meters per second. It didn't like the 0 0.0, so I'm going to fix that one. There we go, a little better. And my pendulum mass, oh, unfortunately, I used 1.47 again. I meant to change that too. Oh, well. I measured 50.10 degrees. Again, because I measured a little bit more accurate, I will give it one more. There we go. And the bullet mass was 30.0. Again, I should acknowledge how many significant figures I have. That's why I do this here, so 838. And I can I come up with 93.00 because that is, again, perfect. All right. Then with the projectile motion, I have to remember that I set the value at 93 meters per second. So I'm going to go over here. I could choose, let's see, I'm going to go back to the zero degrees. And here I'm going to be at 93.0, right? There it is. I guess I can fix that here. There we go. And my height doesn't have to be 20, it could be anything. So let's say I'm going to use actually 28.5 meters. 
the parameters that need to be the same as a ballistic pendulum is, of course, the inertial velocity has to be the same. And according to the directions, I need to use a zero degree angle from this kind of ledge here, which unfortunately is off the screen. There we go. And reset and fire. And let's see how far it goes. There we go. And 220, 240. So this one looks like 225. Let's give that a try. So over here, what did I say? 28.5 meters. That's the ledge. And then this one here is, which was that now? Oh yeah, 225. Click somewhere else. And again, it comes up with something really close, 93.29. I mean, that's an error of 0.3%. Okay. In the real world, you don't get that. Of course, with perfect applets, you, you do. And I think I repeated myself five or ten times already on these perfect data. Anyway, which, so what you actually will see is that you also should, in these red boxes, you should get nice, almost perfect data all the way across. All right. So for the other one, then, the launch angle will be 45 degrees. Almost there, almost there. Oh. oh, wow, cool, 45. Otherwise, again, you can click in there, just don't take off the degree sign and fix that. And then the height is zero degrees. And again, the parameter is the same here, same initial velocity because it's the same gun. And then due to the equation as being used 45 degree angle, I think we can already see that this would be off screen here. So I'm going to zoom out quite a bit. Reset and fire. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Okay. A little off screen, but I think I can still zoom out. So there it is. Becomes a little bit less accurate, right? 800 to 900. So that one looks kind of like 885. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it 885. All right. So the Excel sheet and and the third method, that's actually all I need is the distance, 885. That's how easy the equation is. Click somewhere else, and it calculates 93.13. Again, I'm off by an error of 0.1%. So keep in mind that between all these red results that are automatically calculated, that's why I pulled these equations down so that it automatically cal calculates for you already, that across here, you will come up with four results that match each other virtually perfectly. All right, and that is the lab on the ballistic pendulum and projectile motion with the applets.